In the last tutorial, we discussed a useful construct called an if statement, in which you can execute certain code depending on what conditions have been met. Another very useful construct in programming is the loop. When you need to execute the same or similar code many times, you can use a loop to do so. For example, in an experiment you will probably have many trials which have the same structure and only differ in some detail like which stimulus is being used. You could write code repeatedly for presenting each trial, but your code will ultimately be simpler and more flexible if you use a loop. Let's show a short example. If you wanted to print five different random numbers, you could simply do that like this. This program works fine, but it has a number of problems. First, we had to enter the same code a number of times. Even when copy-pasting, that's a waste of your time. Second, it's hard to make any changes because we have to make the same change a number of times. If we want to print a random integer between 1 and 10 instead of a random double, it's a lot of work. If we wanted to change the number of random numbers we print, we would again have to change a lot of code. Third, the code is not very clear, even for this very simple example. Can you tell how many random numbers we will print just by looking at the program? What we really want is some way to do this. In presentation, we do this using a loop statement. Loop statements have this structure. We first type loop. Then we can optionally set up some initial conditions, which we will discuss in a minute. Next, we type until, and then a Boolean expression that will be evaluated each time before running repeated code. Then we type begin, and then the statements we want to run repeatedly. Finally, we type end. The statements between begin and end which are run repeatedly are typically called the loop body. In our example, the loop statement would be something like this. We want the loop body to execute repeatedly until it has run seven times. To do this, we need to use a variable that tracks how many times the loop body has executed. We can create and initialize this variable in the setup part of the loop statement. When presentation executes a loop statement, it will first execute any statements it finds between loop and until, but only once. Here we just have one statement, int count equals one, but the setup section can contain any number of statements. To make the variable count track how many times the loop body has executed, we can increase its value by one at the end of the loop body. You can see here that the loop body can contain any number of statements you like, though we currently have just two. The first time the loop body is executed, count will contain its initial value 1. The next time through it will be 2, and so forth. We can now write the condition that determines when to stop repeating the loop body. Running this, we see that seven random numbers are printed. You may be wondering why the loop conditional is count is greater than 7 and not count equals 7. If we try the conditional count equals 7, we see that only 6 numbers are printed. This is because presentation checks the loop condition before running the loop body, and when the condition is true, the body is not executed. Let's go through what happens when this loop statement is executed, step by step. First, Presentation enters the loop, creates the variable count, and sets its value to 1. Then presentation checks to see if count is equal to 7. Since 1 is not equal to 7, this condition is false and presentation executes the loop body. The last statement of the loop body adds 1 to count, so count is then 2. The condition is checked again, and since it is still false, the loop body runs again. At the end of the sixth time through, the loop body count will become 7. The condition will then be true and presentation will exit the loop statement before running the loop body a seventh time. 
Note that the condition is checked before running the loop body, even the first time. Say we made a typo and used the condition count is less than 7 instead. The condition is true immediately. Running this program we see that the loop body is not run even once. We now have a program with the qualities we wanted. If we wanted to change what is happening repeatedly, we only need to change it in one place. If we want to change the number of repeats, we need only change the loop condition. In cases of loop statements like this, one that use a counter variable, a common mistake is to forget to increment the counter like this. If you want to run this program, you must remember that you can quit the program using the escape key. This is because without the incrementing statement, count will always be 1, the loop condition will never be true, and the loop body will be repeated forever. If your scenario gets stuck in an endless loop, and therefore does not move forward when you expect it to, it would be a good idea to make sure you have incremented any loop counters. Another common mistake is to initialize counter variables or other variables that should only be initialized once inside the loop body instead of in the setup section. Here, although we are incrementing count, its value is set back to 1 each time through the loop and the loop will never end. There are sometimes cases in which you want to exit a loop prematurely for some reason. In our example, suppose we want to print up to 20 random numbers, but quit if we happen to print the number 5. One way to do this is introduce another variable to track if we printed 5 and to modify the loop condition. We create a boolean variable scene5, which is initially false. We then exit the loop if either count is greater than 20 or scene5 is true. Inside the loop body, in addition to incrementing the counting variable, we set scene5 to the boolean expression number equals 5. We also need to store the random number in a variable number so we can both print it and use it to update scene5. Scene5 will become true if number is 5, at which point the loop condition will become true and the loop will exit before the next repeat. In a case like this, where we might want to quit a loop based on a secondary condition, there is another option called a break statement. A break statement is simply the word break, and it will cause presentation to immediately exit the loop. We can use a break statement instead of using the extra variable scene5. In this case, the loop statement will be largely as it was before. However, we insert a break statement inside an if statement. The break statement will execute if number equals 5, immediately exiting the entire loop statement. In addition to break, there's a similar statement, continue. While break exit the loop statement entirely, continue will cause presentation to skip just the remainder of the loop body for that time through. Presentation will then check the loop condition immediately and conditionally continue to run the loop body. For example, suppose we wanted to print 20 random numbers except for the number 5. We could use a continued statement to accomplish this. After generating a random number, we check to see if it is 5. If it is, we use a continue statement to skip the rest of the loop body. In this case, the number will not be printed and count will not be incremented on that run of the loop body. Presentation will go back up, check the loop condition, and then run the loop body again. In previous tutorials, we discussed the scope of variables. If you create variables inside a loop statement, either in the setup section, between loop and until, or in the loop body, the scope of those variables ends when the loop statement ends.
If we tried to access count outside of the loop to see the final value, we would not be able to. If for some reason we did need the count variable outside of the loop, then we could initialize it outside the loop. Generally speaking, you should take care when creating variables that you are creating them at the proper level of scope. It is good programming practice to create variables at the level of scope in which you need them. This makes it clear to anyone reading the program that the variable is only used in that section and nowhere else. It also allows the same variable name to be used later on in the program. As your scenarios become more complex, it will become more important to pay attention to scope to avoid causing problems down the line. Therefore, we recommend you start programming as cleanly as possible to make your complicated scenarios come together smoothly.